poetry lovers, welcome to my channel Bella Poetry. My name is Bella and I love beautiful poetry. In this segment, which is segment number 11 of our first series of poetry called the uh, uh, Female Poets of the 19th Century, uh, we will discuss a very scandalous and notorious life of Lady Caroline Lamb. Lady Caroline Lamb was an Anglo-Irish aristocrat and a novelist and a poet. She was born on November 13, 1785 in England. Her father was Earl of um, Bassborough and her mother was the Countess of Bassborough. And uh, the parents uh, did not have a very happy marriage. Caroline was their only child and they argued a lot. They argued constantly and they paid a very little attention to their only daughter. And no wonder that Caroline became a high strung and um, a child that had no boundaries and was often out of control. In the first years of her life, Carolyn spent a lot of time abroad with her parents. She suffered from intestinal worms, and one time she almost died from this condition. So the parents took her to France, Italy, Germany to look for new treatments, and after she got better, they returned to England. Carolyn was very well educated. She attended the school in Hans School in Knightsbridge, England. And her teacher was famous Frances Roden, who was a poetess, a published poetess. And she was known for inspiring her students to become poets. So that kind of was a background for Carolyn, the foundation uh, for her becoming a novelist and a poet in her own right. So unfortunately, Caroline could not stay at school for a long time. She didn't get along with other children. She didn't listen to her teachers. And finally, the parents were advised to keep her at home. And they said, you know, she can be controlled in a restricted environment. So maybe she'll do better at home where she has no boundaries. And the father hired a governess who was supposed to keep an eye on her and make sure that she doesn't get into trouble. Well, Caroline, from very early age, she started to write poetry and prose. She spoke French, Italian, Greek, Latin. She enjoyed drama and she was very good at drawing and playing different instruments. So her skills and talents were quite versatile. When she became a teenager, she kind of changed her whole behavior and she became a devout Christian and started to learn, uh, read and learn the Bible. And in June 1805, she was introduced to a young man whose name was William Lamb. He was also from aristocratic family. His mother and father were Lady and Lord of Melbourne. And uh, when they met, they fell in love. It was a love match, although it, they met by introduction. Caroline was all, only 19 years old and she married William. Um, they fell in love, so everything was good until the first wedding night. Uh, Caroline became very depressed after that and she refused to sleep for a while with William because she didn't like his sexual practices in the bedroom. Uh, she was very innocent, she didn't have any experience, and she didn't think that what he was doing was normal. She considered it a sin. But in spite of all this, she got pregnant and in 1806, she gave birth to a premature daughter who passed away uh, very soon after her birth. And in 1807, she gave birth to her son, whose name was Augustus. She loved the baby, but he was born, unfortunately, with mental disability. Uh, today, he would probably be di diagnosed with autism. Uh, the aristocrats of that time, if there was something wrong with a the child, they would commit him to an institution and pay a lot of money for other people to take care of their children. But um, Caroline and William decided to keep Augustus at home and raise him themselves. 
and uh, Augustus actually outlived his mother by eight years. He died in um, 1836. So uh, Caroline, we have this situation where her first and her third pregnancy ended in premature birth and death of her two daughters. Her middle child, Augustus, had mental disability. It's obviously affected her mental and emotional health. And on top of everything, William uh, became a politician. He was traveling a lot. He was not in the house a lot. So, um, and in addition, his brothers and sisters and his mother, who actually introduced William and Caroline, did not like Caroline at all. They resented her. They called her a little beast and they wanted William to divorce her. So this was kind of a foundation for what happened in 1812. In 1812, Lady Caroline Lamb read a book by Lord Byron, Child Harold, and she became obsessed with the poet. Lord Byron at that time was already quite famous and women were all after him. He was like this teenage idol. He was 24 years old, but women were all around, all over him. And he was an attractive man, although he had a club food and he bit his nails, but uh, he was very attractive. And Caroline uh, became obsessed with Lord Byron. They, he actually described her uh, very precisely and he, managed to depict her conflicted personality. He said that she was the cleverest, most agreeable, absurd, amiable, perplexing, dangerous, fascinating little being. And she described him as being mad, bad, and very dangerous. And he was, because he was a philanderer, he had many mistresses, and um, he was not loyal. I would, I would say that he was manipulative in his romantic relationship and relationships and very controlling. They made it a society affair. Uh, Caroline and Byron were equal in wit. They had common interests. They both loved dogs and horses and literature and music and poetry. So they had a lot of things to discuss. Uh, he was, as a lover, he was very demanding and controlling. He wanted her to admit that she loved him more than she loved William, and she wouldn't, which made him crazy. Uh, Caroline was obsessed and in love with Lord Byron, but she really loved her husband in spite of all the difficulties that they were experiencing at that time. So they had a very torrid five-month affair, but then Lord Byron, found himself in debt, and he wanted to marry somebody rich who will pay his debts off. So he dropped Caroline very callously, and uh, Caroline went uh, crazy. She was desperate. She was suffering, and uh, she didn't hide it, causing embarrassment to her husband, to his family, to her family. Uh, one time she forged his signature, she wrote a letter to his publisher, forged his signature in order to get his portrait. She says, if I can have him, then um, at least I can have his portrait. One time she dressed up as a page boy. She was tiny and small. And uh, she dressed up as a page boy and sneaked into his room to have sex with him. He tried to dissuade her, telling her that he was not a good man, that he had an affair, incestuous affair with his half-sister Augusta, and that he had sex with young men in his school when he went to school, which was actually true. But it didn't deter her. She was in love, infatuated with this man and it continued until she had a mental break 
down and was almost institutionalized. She decided to go to Ireland and stay there for a while to pull off. That's what she did. In 1813, she returned to London and she attended a ball in honor of Duke Wellington. And at the ball, she met Lord Byron. And he kind of dissed her and didn't talk to her politely. She became very enraged. She took a blast and tried to cut her veins. So a lot of drama uh, was surrounding Lady Caroline Lamb. Um, and um, eventually she lost all control and all pride of uh, all pride that she had. She described her feelings and her state of mind mind better than any of her biographers did she wrote that i loved you talking about lord byron i loved you as no woman ever could love because i'm not like them but more like a beast who sees no crime in loving and following its master you became such to me master of my soul more than of anything else. So she described herself basically blindly following Byron and begging for his affections. So um, her husband, William, the mother-in-law, Lady Melbourne, begged her husband, William, to leave her. She couldn't stand her, but William refused and he stood by her side maybe because he was involved in the sexual scandals of his own. He liked to spank women. And the worst of it was that he hired orphan girls and whipped them, which became known in the society and caused again the embarrassment to the whole family. So the situation was not the best. Uh, finally, Lord Byron left England. Caroline was devastated. And in 1816, she wrote her first novel, which was called Glenarvon. It was a Gothic novel, and it described the affair that she had with Lord Byron in detail. The book saw a great fin uh, financial uh, success, but not the critical one. So, um, in 1824, she found out that Lord Byron died in Greece, and they say that she uh, collapsed at the funeral, at his funeral. She was very, very distraught and upset, although it was 12 years after the, the affair. It seems that she loved him uh, till the end of her life. So she started drinking heavily, and in 1825, her husband, William Lamb, decided to separate from her. She moved into the Bracket Hole, Bracket Hole and lived there permanently. He hired, so to speak, keepers to keep an eye on her to make sure that she was doing okay because she did care about her deeply and they did stay friends. Um, she drank herself to death basically because in 1827 she had to have a full-time doctor who was taking care of her she became very very sick and when she felt that she was really dying she called for William to come to her side because she said he's the only person that never failed me so William Lamb, who at that time was the Chief Secretary of Ireland, he was uh, appointed the Chief Secretary of Ireland, made a very dangerous crossing back to England and came to her side. Caroline Lamb, Lady Caroline Lamb, passed away on January 25th, 1828, and she was buried in uh, Hatfield. So this is a very sad story of her obsessive and difficult and tragic life all at the same time. Her husband, William Lamb, became the Prime Minister of England later, but he never remarried. 
and uh, Augustus was his only child who unfortunately passed away in 1836, eight years after his mother's death. Um, so we know that Lady Caroline Lamb was famous for her novel that she wrote, Glen, uh, Glen, uh, Glenarvon, which was a Gothic novel, as we said before. Uh, it was published in 1816. She also penned three other novels, Graham Hamilton in 1822, uh, uh, Ada Rice, and Pan Ruddock in 1823. And she published two accomplished parodies of Lord Byron's poetry, and she obviously wrote her own poetry. So um, I would like to read to you a quote by Lady Caroline. She said, The slave of impulse, I have rushed for forward to my own destruction. She knew herself. She knew that what she was doing will kill her at the end, but she couldn't resist her nature. And we will read two of her poems. I suspect that the first poem that we'll read, she uh, was about her husband, William Lamb, and the second uh, was probably dedicated to Lord Byron, who was the crazy love of her life. My heart's fit to break. My heart's fit to break, yet no tear fills my eye as I gaze on the moon and the clouds that flit by. The moon shines so fair, it reminds me of thee, but the clouds that obscure it are emblems of me. They will pass like the dreams of our pleasures in youth. They will pass like the promise of honor and truth. And bright though shall shine when the shadows are gone, all radiant, serene, unobscured, but alone. Meaning that she compares herself to the dark shadows and the dark clouds. And she says, when I am gone, you're going to be happier, although you'll be alone. And the second poem is called, Weep for What Thou's Lost Love. Weep for what thou's lost, love. Weep for what thou's done. Weep for what thou didn't do. And more for what thou's done. Time that's gone returneth never. Keen repining lasteth ever. Heart that pierced refuses gladness. Melancholy causes sadness. Yet, if tears avail not, tears of fond regret, arm thy mind, and proudly, girl, endeavor to forget. Shouldst thou spend the days in grieving, what is past there's no retrieving. Once the hour of passion's over, tear no frown recalls a lover which basically says that I'll be better off if I forget him because he moved on and he doesn't even remember me. Um, this poem brings us to the end of this segment about the notorious, scandalous, and difficult life of Lady Caroline Lamb. In our next series, we will discuss the best love poems and the poets that pen them. So please join us uh, for the next segment of Bella Poetry. Thank you for visiting us for this segment. I hope you enjoy listening to the story about Lady Caroline Lamb and to other stories about amazing women poets, female poets of the 19th century who lived very difficult but very prolific lives and wrote their poetry as a diary describing their feelings and their emotions and their loves and uh, disappointments and so forth. Thank you very much. Please come back for more Bella Poetry. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.